My name is Shifra, and maybe you've heard my name before, and maybe you haven't. Maybe you missed it in the hurry to get to the burning bush where Moses encountered the presence of God and took off his sandals because the holiness of the Lord was so prevalent. Or maybe you were going forward to the parting of the Red Seas where God held back the waters so that the people of Israel could cross through the sea safely so that the Egyptians wouldn't catch them. But but before all of all of that could happen, before Moses could get there, I was here. You'll see it. It's in Exodus 1. I'm in there. And my story, it's it's different. But before Moses could could do all of these things, I was here in the midst of a nation of the oppressed and the oppressors. And so, so you ask my name, my name is Shifra, and people have debated back and forth about who I was. Was I um, a Hebrew or was I an Egyptian? But I would like to remind you that my identity isn't found in, in whether I was a Hebrew or whether I was an Egyptian, but my identity is found in who I was and what I did. So, if you, if you look, um, my, my name is preserved in the testimony of Israel, and, but the king's name isn't found in there. And if you look for Moses' parents' name, it's not found in there. But my name is preserved. Not to say I'm a big deal or anything. <laughs> but, um, but at the start, before, before Moses could do all of these things, I was a midwife and I delivered the babies of the Hebrew women. And, and so 400 years prior to my time, Joseph and his family came into Israel and, and it was a family of 70 and that 70 grew and eventually um, they outnumbered the Egyptians and, and the, the kings, as the, as the people of Israel grew in number, the kings grew in fear and they didn't know uh, if, if the Israelites were too powerful for the Egyptians. And so as they grew in fear, they started to oppress. And so in my time, the king was oppressing the people of Israel. And he was um, putting them into harsh labor, making them work in the field and, and making them uh, work with bricks and mortar. And, and, I, and I watched the oppression that the people of Israel faced. And I stood... In, in the midst of, of the pain, and I got to be a part of bringing life into the world in a place that seemed so dark for so many people. And, and I loved what I did. I loved the Hebrew women, and I loved getting to deliver life into the world. And, and maybe if you've ever experienced a mother with her child, with her baby, that is so precious that she would do anything to protect, that she would do anything to nurture, to love. She would lay down her life, and I got to be a part of the baby's first breath. I got to be in those moments, and that stirred a desire in me to have a family and to know um, what it was like to care for a child so, so deeply. But, but as the oppression continued, one day the king called me and the other midwives to himself, and, and he gave us a new command. And I'll never forget that day that he called us forward and, and he told us what we were to do from now on, that when a Hebrew delivered a baby, that if it was a girl, that's great, let her live. But if it was a boy, we had to kill him right then and there. And so, so I struggled with this because now this greatest rules, ruler, some would say in all the world, has told me that my job is to kill the boys, the, the babies that I loved. I loved uniting the mother with the child. And now I have to rip away the thing that the mother cares the most about, her precious child. And I have to take the baby's life away before the baby has ever experienced the warmth or heard the soothing voice of its mother. So what was I to do? I, I feared the king and what he could do because if I disobeyed, surely my life would end and my hopes for a family would end, and any future would be no more. So my decision became, will I help the Hebrew women? Will I save the lives, or will the fear of the king overtake me? And so I, I, I went back and forth and wrestled in my mind with what to do. Should I let them live, or should I obey the king? Should I... Um, 
take the child away from the mother or should I do what my ruler has told me to do? And so as I struggled with this fear of, of the king, I found that there was somebody else that I feared more. I feared God. And I feared what would God think, what would God say if I were to take away the life of a child. And so, so I struggled. On one side, the king would kill me if I let them live. But on the other side, I have to be responsible for taking the life of a child away and separating the relationship of a mother and its child. So as I struggled back and forth with this, it came time to make a decision. And as I went to the homes of mothers, I found that my fear for the king was great, but something greater ruled in my heart, and that was the fear of the Lord. And so I made the decision that I would let them live, and, and it wasn't easy. Every time I would be with a mother who was giving birth, I would pray and cry out to God, God, please let it be a girl. Don't let it be a boy. Don't bring him in to this destruction, to this pain, to the genocide that's taking place in the nation all around me. God, would you let it be a girl so that I don't have to make this decision one more time? The fear of the king is growing greater in my heart, but I still fear the Lord more. But each time I chose to let the Hebrew children live, and I knew that my decision would come with a cost eventually. And so one day, the king called me and another midwife, her name was Pua Forward, and, and he said, what are you doing letting these Hebrew children live? And in that moment, I knew that all I had ever dreamed and hoped for, the thought of a family, the thought, thought of a child of my own was ripped away. And the fear of the king gripped me, and I didn't know what would happen. And so that day we lied to the king. It was easy. Uh, we told him that, that these Israelite women are, are a lot quicker, they're a lot speedier, and so by the time we got there, the, <laughs> the kids were already born. And so we didn't actually have to ever kill them because we got there too late. Um, but that that wasn't the truth. And so in that moment, the fear of the king gripped my heart, and I lied. And I bet you wouldn't expect what happened next. He let us go. There was no, there was no punishment. There was no death sentence. There was no execution that day, but he let us go. And I'm not saying that I'm proud of the lie that I told because the fear of the king gripped my heart in that moment. But from that moment on, I saw that the Lord blessed me, and he gave me a family, and, and he, surround, he gave me the children that I had hoped for. And, and his blessing was upon my life as well as Bua's, that, that because we let the children live, because we feared the Lord more than we feared the king, he blessed us, and he honored that. And so friends, my call to you today is, does the fear of God rule in your heart, or does the fear of man rule in your heart? And so my struggle was that someone was going to take my life away because I would disobey what they said. And so maybe your struggle isn't, your fear isn't of your life. Maybe you're not afraid that man is going to take away your life, but maybe you're afraid that man is going to take away your reputation. Maybe, maybe man, it seems, has the power to tell you whether you're loved or not. Or maybe it seems that man has the power to tell you if you're worthy or not. Or maybe man has the power to hold your, your job and your wealth and, and everything that you think that you have control of. Maybe you're fearful that man actually has that control. <clears throat> See, I thought the king had that power over my life, but he didn't. It seems this way, but that's not actually how it was because what's the truth is that God was in control the whole time. Mm -hmm. And when I let the fear of God rule in my heart over the fear of man, I found that the Lord blessed me. So friends, don't make your decisions based on what you think man will think of you or will say about you. 
because I risked my life so that these children could live so that I could obey God. So would you be willing to risk your reputation so that you could obey God and not fear man? Would you be willing to, to not care as much about what you wear or, or what you spend your money on or um, what you eat or what you drink or how you talk or what music you listen to? Friends, would you lay that down because the fear of the Lord rules in your heart more than the fear of man? Is it worth it to obey, to love, to know the Father, and to not be well-liked by men? Is it worth it to follow his commandments, to lay down your life, to risk all that you have, so that the Lord, the fear of the Lord may rule in your heart. Because in the end, man is not the one who has control, but God is the one who has control. So I'll leave you with this. Would you simply fear the Lord and walk in obedience to him? Would you love him and would you serve him with your heart and with your soul?